Welcome back to another Unturned video. Today we're going to do the block quest guide where we go from the first quest all the way till the end finishing every single quest. This video is going to have spoilers so if you guys do not wish to be spoiled then click off this video right now and return when you have finished the quest guide yourself. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more guides in the future like this make sure to drop a like let's aim for 500 likes and make sure to subscribe as well if you haven't already we're trying to reach 40,000 by the end of this year. Last video I announced the mythical giveaway and this is the winner. To claim your prize please join my discord and contact me there. Today we're going to roll another one which is a burning Athena shield. If you guys want to win this mythical make sure that you have liked, subscribed and comment something below. Shell members also have a higher chance of winning and if someone wishes to become a member the link will be in the description below. I also would like to announce that I have my own three block servers. If you guys do want to play on them the link will be in the description below. I am pleased to introduce today's sponsor Pine Hosting. Are you interested in setting up your own unturned server then look no further than Pine Hosting. They offer a variety of game servers including Rust, Ark, Valheim and Minecraft. Creating your server only takes a few minutes with Pine Hosting's quick setup process, global server locations, affordable pricing and built-in workshop and plugin installer. If you're interested in taking advantage of this opportunity use the code LDG for a generous 30% discount. The link can be found in the description below and let's dive straight into the video. Alright, so as soon as you join, make sure to head over to Ontori Factory. Once you do arrive there, you will need to talk to this character and they would need help with clearing out six zombies. All the six zombies are inside the factory. All you would need to do is just run up to them and basically press F on them. This quest is extremely easy, very easy to find them as well. After you finish that quest, all you have to do is just go back, talk to the NPC, and then they will give you another quest, which you would need to get a briefcase, which is very close to the safe zone. All you have to do is turn around, walk the road, and in no time you will get it. Then you return back, but then all the NPCs would have moved to their own individual locations spread around the factory. After you finish that quest then you can go talk to the same NPC again and you would need to find food, water and med crates located in Berrywood. The NPC will exactly tell you all of the locations as well. They are in the cinema, the pharmacy and the library. Once you do that then you return back to the safe zone and you place them underneath the stairs. And from that point onwards whenever you do this quest you can interact with it and it will actually give you food, water and meds. After you finish that quest then you will get yourself the first boss quest which is the ground pounder zombie. To find the ground pounder zombie he is located in tree town. Obviously you need to be well prepared to actually kill him. I did manage to take him down with just a bow and a bunch of arrows and hardcore mode. So if you guys do have uh, practically any gun or even attempt to kill him with a bow this one shouldn't be that hard since he's a ground pounder. Then after you finish this quest you go back to the safe zone. From that point on, this NPC will only give you boss fights. From that point onwards, I would start to recommend that you actually start doing quests. A lot of the quests you only require to just give items. For example, this NPC here only requires two batteries. Obviously, since I'm doing a guide, I had to spawn them in, but basically batteries can be very easy to find. Construction areas, you could literally break remotes from houses. There's also an NPC, which is the grandma, where you would need to get yourself a heart-shaped rock. This one is located very close to Berrywood. It is also very easy to complete. And it is right over here, right next to the mine entrance. After you finish this quest, you can start using this NPC to actually get rocks. Basically, with 5 rocks, you have a chance to getting a heart-shaped rock, and the grandma will give you a large cookie. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, but this is just as an extra quest, basically. It's a very cool idea, in my opinion. Now, obviously, the big cookie gives you a lot of food. Next, you can also start doing the Alexander questline. Alexander is one of the most cool NPCs out there. You would need to find certain items located in the Berrywood hard store but they are all quite easy to find as well. Over here is the hardware store. The first item the nails are over here as shown in the video. The toolbox is next to these boxes at the back and the metal scrap is inside the shopping cart as shown over here. Once you finish the first Alexander quest you can also start selling items. After that you can start doing the quests that these two NPCs have as well. Amber needs you to find a small box located inside the save zone. So for the other NPC you need to get plushies which is next to the plane crash. Very easy to find as well. Once you do that make sure to go back. You would need to place the shipment as well next to the NPC. You place it right over there. You finish the quest as well. Also certain NPCs if you do need help with finishing certain quests you can always ask for more help. They will tell you exact locations. Or maybe little tips and tricks that can help you finish the quest easier. But basically, the box for this quest that we are currently doing is inside building 1. 
Once you finish the small box quest, you need to find coal and iron ore. After that, you need to get a forging hammer. You get the forging hammer by going to Alexander. In order to do this, you would have needed to finish the previous quest of Alexander. And basically, he will give it to you. You need to go to the toolbox, interact with it, and you got yourself the forging hammer. You give it to Amber, and you get the next quest, which is going to the diamond. The diamond can be found in the basement but something unexpected is actually going to happen as soon as you enter you get greeted with something else this is the start of the main quest line of buak the quest line does have a lot to do with the anomaly and with the start of scorpion 7 as soon as you enter this room all you have to do is just walk to the lighthouse and as soon as you're inside you just go up the ladder and you keep going up to the very top so as you make it to the top, then you will be taken to another room where you meet the main character of the story. They will explain to you that you would need to do certain quests and to free this character, you need to charge up the soul crystal. They will also tell you that you would need to go to the main lighthouse, which is also another safe zone. As soon as you're done finishing talking, you will be taken back to the basement. From there you collect the diamond and you go finish the quest. After that, you will get yourself another quest where you would need to deliver a parcel inside the post office at Berrywood. As soon as you arrive in the post office, you could instantly see where to place it. Then you go back to the factory and finish the quest. And then you can also get yourself the next quest of the person next to it. And you need to find a bunch of cats spread around the factory. Most of the cats are easy to find, but some tricky ones I found is that inside this area, you would need to go up. Basically, there is a cat right over there. And then there's an also another cat in the green container at the top as well. You would need to do a little jump. Then there's also a cat behind these metal pipes at the very entrance. Then there are also two cats in this area. One of them is behind those paint buckets. The other one is behind the traffic cones. The next cat is inside one of the cupboards next to the generator. Another cat is next to the plots. At the same time, there's also another NPC here where you would need to only collect animal rugs. Obviously, it does take a while to actually find certain animals and to kill them because some of them are quite strong. One of them is on a chair. The next one is in another building at the very top of this metal stairs. He is literally right at the very corner. It only leaves us with the final cat after this guy. And this guy is right next to the basement. All of the 10 cats have been found. After that, you also unlock another NPC, which is James. With James, it's very easy. All you would need to get is a couple of materials. Also, you can finish the rug quest, and then you can also unlock certain knives. After that, you will ask for a wolf rug. Once you finish the wolf rug quest, you can get yourself the next one, which is a bear rug. After you finish the bear rug quest, then you get the final one which is for a moose rug. After you get the moose rug, then this guy's quest line is completely finished. Once you get all of the minerals for James, you also unlock another vendor where you would be able to sell a bunch of minerals. Bunch of pyromorphites and all of that that you don't really need. And then you can unlock another quest which you would need a bunch of seeds for a bunch of different fruit and vegetables. Once you get all of the seeds, then you also unlock another vendor which you could be able to sell and buy seeds as well. Currency in the server is taken as beverage tabs. Beverage tabs usually can be found inside normal civilian locations and you can obviously stack them as well. After this, you can get yourself the next next Alexander quest. You would need to get yourself the toolbox which is right over where you placed it last time. Then you would need to go fix the generator, microphone and tune a radio frequency. All of this is done in the safe zone as well. The generator can be found here, we've already been next to this generator. And as for the microphone, it can be found in this room and you could be able to tune the frequency and this quest is also done. You can also claim yourself the next quest which is the send of, which is the Owen quest line. For this quest you would need cloth wood and then once you finish building it you would need to go to this location that I marked on the map. You go to the end of the structure and you place the raft right over there. You can wave goodbye to it because you will literally never see it ever again. But this quest is also pretty much finished. You would think that the game is actually finished because of a small credit scene, but obviously you are wrong. It blows up.
and you need to go back to the safe zone. Also, from now on, you can unlock the next quest, which is a dead zone quest. You would need to get three chemicals, which are all located in the same room. Obviously, you would need to be well prepared to do this. You would need a gauze mask, filters, and a lighting source. But all of the chemicals can be found in the same room. After that, you also unlock another quest, which you would get to get a bunch of car parts. With this, you actually unlock a vehicle manual blueprint, which is actually really good because then you can start crafting vehicles. Also, these items are quite easy to find from car parts, from interacting with vehicles and finding them in construction areas. After that, you basically just need to start killing all of the boss zombies. There are a total of four all having different powers. The third one is a flamethrower zombie. And the final one basically has multiple powers. After you finish killing all four mega zombies, then you can actually go to the lighthouse to start the final quest. With the key that the character gave you earlier, you can actually enter. And in here, you can get yourself another key for the first level. There are a total of four levels, each level having a different boss zombie, one being harder than the previous one. All of these characters are famous unturned characters. Now, when you're fighting the boss zombies, there's also a anomaly flashbang which can happen. Make sure to not look at it because obviously this can give you a huge disadvantage against your opponent. The first boss zombie is a ground pounder, very easy. All you have to do is just be a bit further away. Obviously, make sure that you are well prepared to fight these zombies. Flashbangs do happen quite frequently as well, but all you have to do is just look away. After the boss has been fought, then you can go to the Red Fog, and there you will be greeted with a mini show. You will get yourself some more explanation behind the lore, I will not be going that much into it, so that I wouldn't spoil it for you guys as well, but basically the first boss zombie has been finished. After you navigate through the Scorpion 7 labs, you will get yourself another key, after you go through the scene, then you will be teleported back to the lighthouse and you can start feeding the soul crystal. After that, you can go to the second floor where you will be fighting against the next boss zombie. Obviously, make sure that you are well equipped for this one as well. Once you go in, this one will be a flamethrower and this one is actually a bit harder than the previous one. So make sure that you have a bunch of meds ready for this boss zombie. After you finish killing him, you will be teleported to the entrance of the dead zone. Then you will just basically enter, you interact with this character, he'll be a anomaly as well, and you navigate and run around through the area. And here you need to get yourself a keycard which is in one of the rooms. You can also get yourself some can soda. Inside one of the toilets, there's a character which you can get to knock. <coughs> there's somebody taking a shit. You would get this voice recording, you could hear it as well for more information about the lore. The key card can be found at the edge of the corridor inside this room right over here. And then you would need to go to the elevator at the entrance and go to the bottom floor. You can find more recordings and you could need to find a book as well, which is for a side quest. You go to the third floor, you open the elevator obviously, you keep going straight. And over here there are rooms with different types of anomalies. I really do think that would be cool that in the future maybe this can be continued on perhaps in a different map with all of these different anomalies. You can read all of the information about them. They are all very cool in my opinion. Such as this one is literally a split zombie. Then you enter inside this room and then inside this room and you go to the next floor. Once you go to the next floor you're about to basically finish it as well. You navigate through the corridors, you pick up the toolbox, and you start fixing the wires. You will need to do this for two times, second time will then take you for the next key. You take the key, and then you're taken to another cutscene. After finishing the cutscene and feeding the soul crystal, then you would be taken to the third boss. You insert the key like all of the others, and you prepare for another insane fight. This guy is actually quite easy to beat. He throws electrical shots towards you. But this can be easily dodged because of all the pillars in the middle. You try to time the shots so that you hide behind the pillar and you can easily kill him by doing that. Once you finish killing him, you are taken back inside the laboratory, this time in the night. You get yourself the keycard and the only thing that you have to do is find the exit. Once you find the exit, then there will be a car waiting for you and this part is also done. Once you find yourself the car, then you are taken back to another cutscene. This time it is quite creepy in my opinion, but it looks quite cool. Once you finish this quest, you cannot actually continue to the fourth one. You would need to do a couple more quests inside the save zone. You would need to go to this NPC again, and you would need to basically do a bunch of decorations that is inside the save zone as well. Basically, you would need to go where Alexander is, 
place a bunch of the chairs, then you pick up all of the decorations, place them as well, and the lanterns as well, and this quest is finished. You go back to the NPC, and you will get yourself the next quest. For this quest, you would need to go to Pine Point in the Potanis shop, and you would need to get yourself some flowers. Once you go back, you can find the NPCs in the shed and you need to get yourself another quest over there in the audience you can see nelson a bunch of the npcs multi montro as well which is quite cool the rings can be found above the counter you go back you give them the rings and this quest is also finished once you finish this quest you get the fourth and the final key and basically you can go back to the lighthouse to get yourself the fourth and final boss battle once you kill the final boss zombie which powers are pretty much all the same, you will be taken to another cutscene. From this cutscene, you will start to realize certain stuff about the lore, which I will not get into, again, so that I wouldn't spoil you guys. <laughs> and that is it, ladies and gentlemen. After that, you do finish with the cutscenes, and then later, you will need to go to the lighthouse to do the credits. Me personally, I absolutely loved this storyline. It was probably one of my favorite storylines that ever happened in Unturned. Toothy did a really, really good job. Honestly, I can't wait to see what they come up with next. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think of this questline. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.